Hey everyone, I thought we could do the review stations today. Um, ideally, you've already done these stations before you watch the video, so you can identify what you're stuck with and what you're not stuck with. Okay, or, you, like, you know, if you're one of those people who always checks the back of the folder, um, maybe what you do is you do the station, then you watch the video for that problem. Then you pause the video, and you do the next station, and then you watch the video for that problem. Um, okay. First question. Given a position of a tiny blue creature running right and left, in front of you, you are located at zero, uh, is given by x of t. See, it's not s of t, it's x of t sometimes. Uh, 4 cosine t on the interval from 5 to 4 to 3 pi. First it says, find a of t. Well, we've been given x of t, and now we want to find a of t, and then a prime. I'm sorry, a of pi. So with station 1, we know that x of t equals 4 cosine t. That means v of t, the derivative of x of t, would be negative 4 sine t. I'm not using product word here. I'm saying a constant times the function. The derivative of a constant times a function is the derivative of the function, negative sum, times a constant. Okay, and then I know that a of t is v prime of t, or the second derivative of x of t. So if I take the derivative of this, again, I'm not going to do product rule. I'm going to say the derivative of sine is cosine, so the derivative of a constant times a function is that constant times the derivative of that function, and so we get this. And so we're asked to find a of pi. So that's negative 4 cosine pi. Cosine of pi is negative 1. And so I get 4. And what would my units be here? Meters per second per second. Okay, that's 1. Two, find the creature's average velocity on pi over 4 to 3 pi over 2. So, um, if I'm looking for average velocity, remember, I don't take two at velocity numbers, add them together, and divide by 2. What I have to do is do s of 3 pi over 2 minus s of pi over 4, all over 3 pi over 2, minus pi over 4. So remember, the slope of the secant on the position function, this is position, it's really not a problem, it's called x of. We use the position with the slope formula to get the average velocity. So 3 pi over 2 goes in here, x, uh, cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0, cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, so I've got 4 times root 2 over 2, or 2 root 2. So on top, I have 2 root 2. On the bottom, 6 pi over 4 minus 1 pi over 4 is 5 pi over 4. And so you could write this as 8 root 2 over 5 pi. And then there was a note here saying don't forget units. Well, uh, the units for distance are meters and for time. We've got seconds, and so this is going to be meters per second. When we talk about velocity, it's a change in position with respect to a change in time. So we've got meters per second. All right, three. Is the creature speeding up at five pi over four? Well, how do I know if the creature is speeding up? Well, I've got a couple of ways to do it, and at this point in the year, most students like to say, okay, v of t is the derivative of x, so it's negative 4 sine t. So the graph v of t, there's pi over 2, there's the pi over 2, that negative, Okay, so the blue one is V of T. But we're talking about speeding up, and so we want the absolute value of that. And so most people like to graph a speed graph. When are we speeding up? 
Well, it appears that we're speeding up from when we're starting at pi. Oh, at pi over five pi over four. Five pi over four is here. Um, and so, yes, according to the speed graph, we are speeding up. Um, but that's not the way you're going to do it by the time you get to the AP exam. So I will share with you now um, speeding up means V and A have the same sign. And slowing down, V and A have opposite signs. So one is positive and one is negative. Here, both are positive or both are negative. So, let's look at our original velocity graph. Okay, here's velocity, and we're looking at 5 pi over 4. Here's 5 pi over 4. So I'm going to look at V of 5 pi over 4 is positive. And what about A at 5 pi over 4? Well, A of T represents the slopes of V. So let's just look at the slope over here. The slope over here is a positive slope. So I know that A of 5 pi over 4 will also be positive. Since V and A have the same sign, we say we're speeding up. And the reason I say that this is going to be what you use instead of graphing the speed function, after you're going to be asked to work with some kind of function that you can't graph. Uh, and so, but we will be able to evaluate velocity and acceleration. And so when velocity and acceleration are the same sign, you know you're speeding up. And if they have opposite signs, you know you're slowing down. So, for example, over here at 7 pi over 4, I see velocity is positive, but I see a negative slope there because I have a negative acceleration, the slopes on velocity, and a positive velocity. Since those signs are opposite, I know that the object is slowing down. Okay. Anything else? Uh, four. What's the creature's max position to the right of you, to the left of you? When are they in these positions? Okay, so if we go back and we graph our position function, x of t is 4 cosine t. We're here. And by here, I don't mean here. I mean here. We are at zero meters. Okay, this is our position function, x of t. This says that we're four meters to the right. This says we're four meters to the left. This says we're four meters to the right. When are we at zero meters? Here at pi over two, here at three pi over two. Okay, so what is the maximum position to the right of you? Four. And four. And what is the maximum position to the left of you? Here at negative four. Um, and when do, when are they in these points? So zero, four, to the right, max to the right. Pi negative four max to the left and two pi four max to the right. Now, if we only consider um, pi over four to three pi over two, let's think about that. Here's pi over four. That's still a max. And here's 3 pi over 2. So now, I would say, wow, I've only got one max over here, and that's a pi over 4. Mm, pi over 4, and if I plug pi over 4 into the position function, cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, and so I get 2 root 2 here. Um, the 
because this is their back at zero, this is furthest to the right, and furthest to the left stays the same. Okay, so those will be my answers to part B. And no station one. Station two, find dy dx in each case. So these are just basic derivative problems for station two. We're given number one, y equals two secant x. So y prime equals two secant x tangent x. Two, y equals negative cotangent x. Well, I know the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared times this negative will give me y prime equals cosecant squared x. Three. Three says y equals x squared times x. Well, that's a product, so y prime is going to be this times the derivative of that. Plus this times the derivative of that. Okay, that's the first three. Oh, we've only got four, so let's put it over here. Four, y equals x squared over sine x. You know, there's two ways of doing this problem. One, you can use the quotient rule. The other is you could write this as x squared cosecant x, right? Because this is one over sine. Um, yeah, I don't think most people see to do that, so I'm going to do it with the quotient rule. y prime is low d high minus high d low over low squared. Okie dokie. Um, and yes, you could factor the next side on top, but that won't get you far. So I'm moving on to station three. Station three says, at what point or points does the graph y equal this stuff have a horizontal tangent? What's the slope of a horizontal tangent? The slope of a horizontal tangent is zero. And a synonym for slope in our class? Derivative. So I'm looking for when the derivative is zero. So my function y equals x over x squared plus nine, and now y prime low e high minus i e low all over low squared. So on top, my y prime has x squared plus 9 minus 2x squared over x squared plus 9 squared. And if I tidy that up, y prime is negative x squared plus 9. All right, now I'm supposed to set this derivative equal to 0. Oops, that means so, Zero equals negative x squared plus nine over x squared plus nine squared. See, look what happens. If I start by multiplying both sides by x squared plus nine squared, and over here by x squared plus nine squared, this ends up being zero, and this cancels. So the denominator doesn't play any role in the derivative being zero. The denominator plays a role in telling me when the derivative is undefined, and that will be important for us in chapter 5. So now I've got 9 times x squared. And if I solve that equation, I get x equals plus and minus 3. So at x equals 3, I have a horizontal tangent. At x equals negative 3, I have a horizontal tangent. Um, you can always graph uh, this function to confirm that. Uh, but uh, I think I feel pretty good about this now. Maybe I've talked myself into checking. Okay, so uh, clear x divided by parentheses x squared plus 9. And I just want to see a graph of this in the standard viewing window. And I'm going to have to change that window to negative 1. I don't see it, so I'm going to get close here. Negative 
So there at positive 3, I have a horizontal tangent, and there at negative 3, I have a horizontal tangent. Okay, so horizontal tangent means set the derivative equal to 0. Next station, show that this satisfies this equation. Well, okay, so let's, let's see what that's all about. Station 4. We've got y equals x to the third plus 3x plus 1. So y prime would be 3x squared plus 3. y double prime would be 6x. y triple prime is going to be 6. Okay, and it says satisfies the equation y triple prime plus x y double prime minus 2y prime equals 0. So let's substitute in what we know. Uh, that's going to be 6 plus x times 6x minus 2 times 3x squared plus 3 equals 0. So that's 6 plus 6x squared minus 6x squared minus 6. Hey, look at that. Those cancel, those cancel, 0 equals 0. That wasn't so Okay. Oh yeah, please know. Uh, I should definitely change that on your stations, or you have to deal with it. Station 5. Find the equation of the tangent line of y equals f of x at the point where x equals negative 3 if f of negative 3 equals 2 and f prime of negative 3 equals 5. And we're writing the tangent line. Well, look, here's our point. And here's our slope at that point. So, my tangent line equation, y minus 2 equals 5, x minus minus 3. Of course, you can simplify, but I don't recommend it. Alright, that's 1. What about 2? If f of 4 equals 3 and f prime of 4 equals negative 5, find g prime of 4 if Huh, part A, g of x equals x to the one-half times f of x. Okay, so I'm definitely not going to do this up here, because I need a lot of space, because I know I have to do the derivative of the product rule, one-half x to the minus one-half times f of x plus f prime of x times x to the one. And we want to know g prime of so that's going to be 1 over 2 squared of 4 times f of 4 plus f prime of 4 uh, times square root of 4. Alright, f of 4 is 3. Uh, 1 fourth times 3 plus negative 5 times 2. Uh, yeah, so that's minus 10 plus 3 fourths plus minus 9 and 4 negative 37 fourths. Uh, yep, good. And B, g of x is f of x over x. Again, we're still looking for g prime of 4. Um, so I have to find my derivative, g prime would be low, b pi minus i below over low squared. And remember, we're looking for g prime of 4. So I'm going to plug 4 into all the x's now. I'm going to have 4 times f prime of 4 minus f of 4 times 1 over 4 squared. Well, we said f prime of 4 was negative 5 f of 4, f of 4 is 3, all over 16. So I've got negative 23 over 16 is g prime of 5. Yes, station 5. Station 6, whoop, this one is 
Find the values of a and b so that f will be differentiable at 1. I remembered doing this problem in the video for you. Now here it is at station 6. And the reason it shows up again is because that AP loves asking this question. Okay, so what's r f of x? r f of x is 3x squared for x less than or equal to 1, and ax plus b for x greater than 1. And we want f prime of 1 to exist. Okay, so tell me, what were the requirements for the differentiable at a point? First, f must be continuous at x equals 1. And the second thing we needed was that the limit of the slopes from both sides of 1 were equal. So the limit as x approaches 1 from the positive side of f prime equals the limit as x approaches 1 from the negative side of f prime. Okay, now it doesn't say we can't use our derivative shortcuts, so go to it. What about continuity? Well, remember with continuity, we needed to show that the limit as x approaches 1 from the positive side of f is the limit as x approaches 1 from the negative sign of that equals f of 1. So f of 1, I plug a 1 in there and I get 3. The limit as x approaches 1 from the negative sign, I plug a 1 in there and I get 3. And here, I plug a 1 into this function and I get a plus b. Well, I know that this limit must equal this limit must equal this value if the function is continuous. And so I have this equation a plus b equals 3. Now, what about here? What about the limit of the slopes? Well, the limit of the slopes from the positive side, the derivative here, the slope here, is a, and the derivative over here is 6x, but we want to know at 1. So, 6 times 1. So I know that a equals 6, and a plus b equals is 3, so 6 plus b equals 3, so b must be negative 2. So when a equals 6 and b equals negative 3, the derivative will exist at x equals 1 because this function will be both continuous at x equals 1 and the limit of the slopes from both sides of x equals 1 of f of x will be the same. Alright, that was station 6. Station 7. F triple prime of 2, where f of x equals this. Well, that's silly. You know why I say that's silly? Because I think that f of x being 3x squared minus 2, f prime is 6x, f double prime is 6, and so f triple prime is 0 because it's the derivative of the constant. So if they ask me the question, hey, what's f? It's still going to be zero. That's why I thought that was zero. Two. I'm um, looking for the second derivative uh, at x equals 1. If y equals 6, x equals 5, x squared. Okay, y prime then is uh, 30, x squared, minus x. And y double prime is 1, 1, 2, x squared. And we want to know y double prime of 1. It's going to be 120 minus 8 or 120. Alright. Station 8. Find you want the x in the case below. Okay. Station 8, we get to practice product. y is equal to 3x plus 2 over x times x minus r plus 1. Now, a word about this. Um, there's two approaches to this problem. And the first of them is by going to use this approach. So you say this and you do it with a back. So 
the derivative of that will be minus 5 plus 6 plus that times the derivative of that. Now, in order to do the derivative of that, you have a function. So, Okay, so that's very messy. I would move that to the bottom and turn that into the next thing. I would just give you the number of five. I would say three x minus two x cancels. I have minus two at the top here over x squared. Probably put that down here on the denominator four. But I don't have to because it just says find the derivative and I have it. But anyway, this is what most students will do. It might be worth your time to think about this problem this way. Three plus two plus Where did I get that? Well, I split this into two fractions. One was three x over x plus two over x is the same as two x to the minus one. So now I'm just going to have y prime equals this times the derivative of that. is negative 5x prime 6 plus this times the derivative of that. The derivative of 3 is 0. The derivative of this would be negative 2x minus 2. And that seemed a lot easier to me, but I had to be able to see that this could be broken up into this before I used the product rule. Okay, number 2. On station 8, y equals 3x over 2x plus 1. That's definitely quotient rule. Uh, low d i minus i d low all over low squared. Um, and if I tidy this up on top, here's a minus 6x, here's a plus 6x, and a plus 3. It just comes down to this. This would be fine. Though, if you have a multiple choice question, this will be your answer. Okay, and by the way, we have multiple choice on our tests because half of the AP exam is multiple choice. In fact, they often ask us uh, the more sort of basics questions, like can you use quotient rule? Um, so, yeah, you could probably. Simplify. Three. Y equals x squared plus one over three x. Again, you know you've only got one thing on the bottom, so you could consider this as x squared over three x plus one over three x. I don't know if it's worth it though. Um, that's one third x plus one third x to the minus one. Um, so y prime is one third minus one-third x to the minus two. Um, which, I can go to the third from one minus one-third x squared. So, that's one way to this problem. But most people don't split that function up. Instead, they use quotient rule. Um, so, with quotient rule, both the i minus i below over low squared. I will say in chapter 5, when we set derivatives equal to 0, because people aren't simplifying now, they get into that bad algebra 1 and algebra 2 habit of forgetting to distribute this negative to this. Um, so minus 6x squared minus 3x squared minus 3 over there's some combining of the terms I can do. And I can even put on the 3 everywhere. So that's going to be negative x squared minus 1 over 3x squared. And lo and behold, if I split this out into 2, I get 1 third minus 1 third with x squared on the bottom. So I can get to the same place. Um, I just need to know for Alright, station 9.
use the fact that f prime is the limit of h minus x zero. Write the equation of the tangent line at x equals 2. Well, I know already that I need a point and a slope. So I know why that I have to get the x. But now I also need f prime of 2. And that means I'm going to have to come back on the x. So, x will be. Zero of one over x plus h minus one over x over h. Up top, I'm going to make the denominator for my x over x, x plus h, x plus h. And so now my limit is the base of x plus h x to zero minus minus x plus h over x. Over h over 1. So rather than do this, I'm going to do the multiply. So I'm going to times 1 over h. Alright, well, what do you notice up top? So we're going to have both of them. This is h x to 0, x minus x minus h, this is h minus h minus h. Well, I notice on top that these cancel each other. And I notice that I can take so now I deal with the limit of x h x to zero of negative one over x x plus h. And here is where I feel like I can finally do the direct substitution because that one is zero. And negative one over x squared is x times x plus zero. Alright, and remember we were looking for f prime of two. So my slope at 2, negative 1 fourth, negative 1, negative slope, 1 minus 1 half, negative 1 fourth, minus minus 2, is my tangent line. Uh, right the equation of the tangent line is x equals 2. Okay. Station 10. Given f of x is its base wise function, we can let the function differentiate back to 1. If so, find the derivative of the slope Okay, so our f of x is x squared, or x less than or equal to 1, and square root of x, or x greater than 1. And we want to know, does f prime of 1 exist? And what is f prime of 1 prime of 1 exists? So what did we say? So we need continuity. And that means that f of 1 equals the limit. As it approaches 1 from the positive side of f, is the limit as x approaches 1 from the negative side of f. In addition to continuity, I have also recognized that the limit of the slopes as x approaches 1 should be the same. All right, so let's check the limit of the function by plugging the 1 into each of these. So that's going to be 1 equals 1, and f of 1 is 1. So we're continuing this. Now what about the limit of the slopes? Well, the slope here is 2x. So 2 times 2, that's 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Now the slope here, x to the 1, If I plug a 1 in there, I end up with uh -oh. 2 does not equal 1. So no, that prime of 1 does not exist. And in fact, my expectation would be that you would say that prime of 1 does not exist. 
is because the limit as x approaches 1 from the negative side of f prime does not equal the limit as x approaches 1 from the positive side of f prime. Uh, this was 2 does not equal 1. Okay, and the station Station of moment. Let's take a look at station of moment. Okay, station 11. Find the equation of all intangent here. Oh, look at that. And then find the derivative of this. Oh, find the derivative of this. And find the derivative of this. I can't wait. So, Station 11 has a bunch of derivative stuff. First one is we're supposed to write the tangent line. And x equals 2 to the function y on the line steps. And the other one plus x. Okay, so I need a point, which means I plug that point in there. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. So we have this ordered pair. Now I need to know y prime of 2. So that means I have to use the quotient rule. Low q high minus i d low over low squared. And that's y prime. Now you can either tidy this up or just plug it to the axis. I plug in 2 there, 1 minus 2 is negative 1 plus 1 over 3 squared. And so I end up with negative 2 x. Okay. Yes, that's correct. So now writing the equation of the tangent line, y minus minus 1 third. Uh, because that's so many, so much opportunity to make a mistake and simplify. Alright, 2 says find d dt of 16 squared. Well, this is the entire form of the verb saying take d, the derivative of this. And so we know that's going to be 32. That's what we're using the power of the verb. Taking the derivative of the squared d times the constant. It's a problem. Okay, 3 says I'm to CDR. Yet C equals I R. Well, that's instructing me to take the derivative of both sides to find the CDR. So if I take the derivative with respect to R, I get to I R. This is a linear equation of y equals 4x. 4 would be the slope, x is the variable that I have equation. Well, I have a linear equation here with a constant g phi. That's the slope. So that's a nice way to change in circumference with respect to change in radius. And finally, problem number four says find d prime of r if d equals i r cubed. So the derivative of both sides is d r of the number d prime of r. Would be three times the derivative and that's the end of station. Station twelve. First, there it is. Okay. Um. So, um. Let f be this function. Show that the limit of the slopes are equal, but that f prime of zero does not exist. Well, what can that mean? Here on station 12, we've got f of x equals x squared for x less than or equal to 0, x squared plus 1 for x greater than 0, and I'm supposed to know that the limit as x approaches 0 from the positive side of f prime does equal the limit as x approaches 0 from the negative side of f prime. Okay, so f prime, we've got um, and, and I'm expecting, oh yes, I'm expecting. 
So um, I'm supposed to show that this is true. That's first. So let's start off with this one. This would be uh, the limit as x heads to 0 of x squared minus x of 0 over x minus 0. And so then I'll get the limit as x heads to 0 of x, which is 0. And, oh, that was the minus 1. Now I need to do the plus 1. x approaches 0 from the positive of x prime. It's the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared plus 1 minus x of 1 is, I'm sorry, x of 0 is 1 over x minus 0. And again, I get the limit as x approaches 0 of x, and so I get 0. So I know that the limit of the slopes from both sides is 0. Well, that's great. I've shown that. But then I say, then show that f prime of 0 does not exist. But wait, the limit of the slopes is the same from both sides. What else is there? Dun dun da Continuity! f needs to be continuous at 0. Does the limit as x approaches 0 from the positive side of f equal the limit as x approaches 0 from the negative side of f? If I plug a 0 in here, I get 0. If I plug a 0 in here, I get 1. So what do we know? We know that f, since f is not continuous, and x equals 0, f prime of 0 does not exist. And really, because you're amazing graphers, you should be able to look at this piecewise function and say, no way can I have a derivative here. No, that's crazy talk. This function is continuous. All right, that was station 12. Let's take a look at station 13 or 14 f of 3 is negative 2, f prime of 3, find g prime of 3, and each of these below. Oh, these are so typical AP questions. Station 13. So we know that f of 3 is negative 2, and we know that f prime of 3 is 4. And then in part A, they say g of x equals 3x squared minus 5 times f of x. And we're looking for g prime of 3. Okay, so g prime is going to be 6x minus a constant times a function is that constant times the derivative of the function. So now let's plug in a 3. g prime of 3 will be 6 times 3 times 5 times f prime of 3. And we said that f prime of 3 is 4. So we get negative 2. B prime of 3 is negative 2 in part A. Now let's take a look at part B. Part B, we're given the g of x this time, is 2x plus 1 over f of x. So in order to find g prime of x, I need to use the quotient here. Low d high minus i d low all over low squared. And we want g prime of 3, so that's going to be f of 3 times 2 minus 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7 times f prime of 3 over f of 3 squared. Well, we know that f of 3 is negative 2. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. And f prime of 3 is 4 times negative 7 is negative 28. f of 3 again is negative 2, negative 2 squared is positive 4. So I have negative 32 over 4, or negative 8. This is negative 3. g prime of 3 for part b is negative 8. Alright, and our last station. Ooh, we want to find f prime of 4 using two different random definitions of the derivative. Okay, well these are good stations, and you definitely need to know all this stuff that you've
negative x equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 4. First, we're supposed to say the limit as x approaches x minus 4. Equals the limit x approaches 4 of f of x minus f of 4 over x minus 4. So that's going to be the limit of x minus approaches 4 of 2x squared minus 3x plus 4 minus f of 4. Find f of 4 by plugging the 4 in here. 16 times 2 is 32 minus 12 plus 4, uh, and that's going to be 24. Okay, so we now have the limit as x approaches 4 to x squared minus 3x minus 20 over x minus 4. And I'm thinking that this is going to be a factor, and that one of the factors will be x minus 4. And this is going to be 5 plus minus 8. 5 is minus 3, there's a minus 1. How did I know that this would be an x minus 4? Because somebody's got to cancel with that guy on the bottom, or I won't be able to do direct substitution. And so when I do, 2 times 4 is 8, 8 plus 5 is 13, and the prime of 4 is 13. Okay, so that was part A. We used that one definition of the derivative. And now in part B, we're asked to do the problem again. But this time we want to find f prime of 4 using the limit as h heads to 0 of f of 4 plus h minus f of 4 over h. Okay, so what do we remember? We remember that we have to plug in 4 plus h into each of these x's. 4 plus h plus 2 squared minus 3, 4 plus h plus 4. Minus, what was f of 4? 32, 36, minus 12, plus 4 over h. That's right. So then I'm going to have the limit as h heads to 0 of 2 times 16 plus 8h plus h squared minus 12 minus 3h. Can't tell you how many people forget that. Uh, minus 1. All over h. Which is the limit h heads to 0, 32, plus 16h, plus 2h squared, minus 12, plus 3h, minus 20, over h. Alright, so there's minus 32, there's plus 32, that cancels. Oops, I just put that minus 3h. Um, so now what? Oh look, they all have an h, so I can put an h out of everyone. Cancel, and then plug in the 0, and I get 13. So we know that f prime of 4 is 13. Hey, wasn't that what we got originally? Sure was. So we're good to go. We're all done now. Great job. Stations were pretty gentle, I thought, but very test reasonable. Um, so make sure you're comfortable with those stations. All right. Take care, everyone. I'll see you in the next video.